Today in Python, we're going to learn a little bit about how conditions work. And if statements, we're going to learn about Boolean operators and um, logical expressions. So let's get started. <clears throat> to start things off, I'm going to set up three variables. I'm going to have x, I make it equal to 3, y can equal 4, and z can equal 5. So I've got three numbers that I can use later on in my code. So the first thing we want to learn about is something called um, Boolean expressions. Boolean expressions are basically things that evaluate to either being true or being false um, by comparison. So uh, let me show you a, an example of a Boolean expression. So if I said up here I've got x gets the value of 3 and we write that by saying x equals sign 3. Here I can check to see if x equals 3 with double equals. So this says x gets the value of 3, and this says get is x getting the value of 3. So it's checking to see if x has the value of 3. Now we can't see what that gives us unless we print it out. So let's wrap it in a print statement and push run, and we can see it evaluates to true. So let's check the type of um, check the type of that. So I'm going to copy it down here and just write type Oops, so we'll print type, and that'll tell us what type of variable it's returning. So you can see it's in class bool. Bool is just the short form for Boolean. And Boolean is a variable that is either true or false, and nothing else. So we can see that when we write out the Boolean expression, is x equal to 3? In this case, it's true. But similarly, if I were to write out, oops, is y equal to 3? We know we set y's value to 4 up there, so when I run that, it gives me false. It does not equal 3. There are other types of um, Boolean expressions. You don't have to just check is something equal. Let's check uh, if x is less than 2. When we run that, we can see it's false. But let's check, is x less than 4? Run that, and we can see it's true. We know x is equal to 3, so when we check, is it less than 4, it gives us true. You'll notice that true and false have uppercase letters. Now, why is this useful? Well, we could check if two variables equal each other. So let's say print, does x equal the value of y? false, but we might check, is x less than y? That's true. So we're comparing two different variables from our code. We might check, is x greater than y? Run that, and that's false. There are times in your code where you sometimes want to run something, and sometimes where you don't. And often, you check this using a Boolean expression. This is called a conditional statement, and we're going to learn it now. So we're going to learn if, uh, if conditions. So if conditions run only when things or are true. So let's say we only wanted to print out a statement if x equals 3. So we just write if x is equal to, that's the double equals, 3, colon, print, x is equal to 3. Now when we run that, it'll only run if x is equal to 3. Let's check another one. You'll notice that the statement that executes is indented underneath the if statement. Anything that I write indented under the if statement will run. Will run. This will run also. So if x is equal to 3, x is equal to 3, this will run also. If we checked if x equals 4 and run it, we know it doesn't. It doesn't run either of those things. So neither of those things are being printed out. Let's just change it back. So now, when I'm ready to continue on and have my code execute outside the if statement, I just need to backspace back to the far left. 
So if statements run if something is true, so I could just literally write if true, remember true has an uppercase T, print, oops, but print has a lowercase, print, it's true, true is true. When I run that, true is true. And if I write false here, it will not run because false is not true. Change it back to true. So true is true. So this evaluates, as we learned up here, to true or false based on the value of x. And it runs the things under the if statement based on that. So we could check something like if y, we know y is equal to 4. So we could say if y is greater than 3, print y greater than 3. When I push play, it runs y is greater than 3. Later on, we might check if y is less than 3, colon, print y less than 3. Will that run? Not in this case, because y is greater than 3. It equals 4. So it's not running. It's running this one and not this one. OK, let's write a little fun program here. Uh, let's create a program to guess a number. So let's call it secret number. Uh, and we'll choose a number between 1 and 10. I'll put 9. And then we're going to ask the user to guess what the secret number is. So we'll set up a variable called guess number, and we'll set it equal to, we're going to make sure it's an integer number so that we can compare it using these Boolean operators. And we'll get input from our user, and we'll tell them, guess the number between 1 and 10. So what do we want to do with that? Well, we want to tell them, you got it, if they guess the right number. So we're going to check if our guess number is equal to, that's double equals, secret number. What do we want to do? Well, let's print out, you guessed the secret number. Sometimes, though, we want to tell them something else. And so our if statement can also have an else statement. It will run what it'll always run if this one evaluates to false. So if they were to guess the wrong number, it will then print this message out. You guessed the wrong number. So let's run our code. Here we go. It's asking us to guess a number between 1 and 10. Let's guess 2. And push return. And it writes, you guessed the wrong number. So what happened was it compared the guess number, which we put as 2. It's checking, is it equal to secret number? It's not, because it's 9. So it does not run this code. Instead, it skips down to the else, and it runs, you guessed the wrong number. Let's run it again, and this time, let's guess correctly. So we know the number's 9. I'll go ahead oops, and put 9. And you guess the secret number. All right. Now, do you remember we wanted to find out if um, maybe we want to give them some hints? So let's just run this again. I'll copy this whole code down here. And we'll say, OK, if you guessed the secret number, print out you guessed the right number. But maybe we want to give them hints. So let's say L if. That means this runs. It's an additional if statement that only runs if this if statement fails. So else if, l if, guess number is less than secret number, print you guessed too small a number. And then in our else statement, instead of just saying you guessed the wrong number, so if the number is not too small a number, and it's not an e equal to the number, it therefore must be logically 
larger. You guessed too large a number. Okay, let's run it again. All right, so let's guess one. That's too small a number. You guessed too small a number. Let's push play, run it again. Let's guess 10, that's too large a number. You guessed too large a number. And finally, let's guess the right one, nine. You guessed the secret number. So this is an if condition with an else if that runs only if the if statement is false. And otherwise, it runs the, the else statement. All right. So that's if, else if, else. Sometimes we want to check something more complicated than just if something is equal to or not equal to or greater than. Sometimes we want to do a little bit of math, for example. So uh, let's print out. We know x equals 3. So if I just print out x, let's uh, go ahead and run our code. Here's our guessing game. OK, so we print out the value of x at equals 3. Let's make that input statement not run currently. So I'm going to just say, I'll comment that out so we don't have to see that running every time. And we'll just say guess number equals 2. All right, so we're printing out x, the value of x, which is 3. But maybe we want to find out something about x. Let's say, um, let's say is x equal to 4. We'll run it, and it says false. But maybe we want to find out if x plus 1 is equal to 4. Let's check that out. Run that. Is x plus 1 equal to 4? It is. So our logical, or sorry, our Boolean expressions can also include arithmetic expressions as well. Now here's um, something that's maybe a little more complicated. We learned a while ago about different types of division. So if I want to just divide something, I can use the slash. If I want to use integer division, I can use that. So ex as an example, print 5 divided by 2 is going to give us 2.5. But if I use integer division, it'll tell me the answer is 2, because two whole 2s can fit in 5. If I want to know the remainder of that, I use this, 5 mod 2 gives me the remainder, and the remainder is 1. So that means the integer division returns 2, and then we have 1 remaining. We could use this to find out if a number is even or odd. So let's set up a number variable, and for right now, we'll say it equals 2. So let's check this to find out if it's even or odd. If a number is even, it has to be divisible by 2. If a number is divisible by 2, its remainder is 0. So I'll say number mod 2. So if the, the remainder, after we divide it by 2, is equal to 0, print number is even. And if a number isn't even, it automatically is false. So number is, sorry, not false, is odd. All right, let's run this. Two is even. Three is odd. Four is even. And five is odd. 177, it should be odd, is odd. So basically, it's printing out, let's print that out, number mod, let's do percent, 
two. number mod two. So we can see the result. 177 is odd. Oh, we need this statement also to run here. There we go. 177 when divided by two has a remainder of one. Let's learn about logical operators. Sometimes we need to do something only when two conditions are true, as an example. So there's a logical operator called AND. How does that work? Well, let's just test it at its most basic. So if something is true, if we need something to be true, oh, uppercase, AND true. So if something is true AND true, it's true. That seems really obvious, right? But if something is true and false, and something is false, and we end them together, we get false. Similarly, if the first expression is false and the second is true, it's also false. And finally, and this is probably obvious, but if both evaluate to false, it's false as well. So only when both things on either side of the end logical operator are true do we get something as true. Let's do something a little more complicated here. Let's, uh, let's find out. We know x is 3 right now in this program. So let's check. Uh, is x less than 2? And then we'll say x less than 2. Run that. And it is false. But is it greater than 2? Yes. Let's print out this. Is x greater than 2? And is x less than 4. We know that the value of x currently is 3, so that should be true. So let's check it out. x greater than 2 and x less than 4. So if x is less than 2, it's true. And if, sorry, if x is greater than 2, it evaluates to true. And if x is less than 4, it evaluates also to true. So if it's true and true, just like up here, it should give us true. Push play. True. Is x greater than 2 and x less than 4? True. Interestingly though, we could say is x greater than 2 and is x less than 3? Well, let's find out x greater than 2 and x less than 3. Run. False. Well, we know it's greater than 2, but 3 is not less than 3. It's equal to 3. So that becomes false. So we have true and false. True and false becomes false. So both conditions are not met, and therefore that statement is false. The next logical operator we're going to look at is called OR. And here's how it works. So if something is true or true, it's true. Makes sense. Print. If something is true or false, it's true. If something, if a statement is false or true, we get true. And finally, false or false is false. The way you read this is, is the statement on this side of the expression true? Or is the expression on this side 
true or false. If both of them, or if one is true on either side, it returns true. So in this case, this one is true. So it's just asking, is this or this true? If it is, it's true. Is this or this true? In both cases, these are false, so we get false. All right, let's use this as an expression. So we did this up here. So we know that that is x less than, or greater than, uh, oops, is x greater than 2 is true. So let's print a more complicated statement using our logical operators. So is x greater than 2 or is x less than 4. So we know x is greater than 2 because it's 3. x is, is 3 less than 4. That's also true. So this is going to print out true. Now we know, because x equals 3, so is x, let's say, is x greater than 2 or is x greater than 4? We know x is not greater than 4, but it's checking for one of these two conditions. Is this one true or is that one true? And if it is, then print out true. There we go. So it is true. That's how the OR operator works. The last one we're going to look at is the NOT operator. Well, it seems really simple and you wonder why it exists initially. So, NOT TRUE, I'm sure you'll guess, is FALSE. And NOT FALSE evaluates to TRUE. So it seems kind of simple, but it can be combined to become a little more complicated. So we can say not false and true. We know our AND operator only returns true when both things are true on either side of the AND statement. But there are there's an order of operations to logical operators the same way there is to math. We do not, then we do and, then we do or. So, not false is true and true, which will return true. Or print not false and not true. That's going to be false because we've got, now we have true on this side of the AND statement and false on this side. Also, we can do this. Not false and false. It's going to do what's in the brackets first, which is false and false. It's going to give us false and then it's going to not that and turn it true, just like that. All right, so how can we use these in conditional statements? That's where they actually become powerful. So as an example, we might want to find out if a number is divisible by more than one thing. So let's uh, create a number here, 12. Number equals 12. And let's say, if number mod 3, so if it's divisible by 3, it's divisible by 3, meaning it has a remainder of 0, and the number is mod 4, e also equals 0, that means it has a remainder of 0 after dividing by 4, what do we want to do? Print number, oops, number is divisible by 3 and 4. 
else lf number mod 3 equals 0 print number only divisible by 3 l if number mod 4 equals 0 print number only divisible by 4 else print number not divisible by 3 or 4. All right, let's try this out. Well, we know the number 12 is divisible by 3 and 4. So when we run our code, number, let's make it a little cooler here. Number, number is divisible by 3. All right, let's run it again. Oops. Number 12 is divisible by 3 and 4. Now let's change this number to 8. Ah, number is only divisible by 4. I'll try 9. A number is only divisible by 3. Let's try 24. Number 24 is divisible by 3 and 4. So this is an example where we're bringing it all together. We're using our Boolean expressions to find out if something is true. We're using our logical expressions to find out if both things evaluate to true. And then we're printing out certain things based on those conditions. This is how if statements work. And often we just use if simple if statements in our code, but sometimes they need to get more complicated and more nuanced like this.